Okay, the whole is back in order. Um, are there any amendments? Okay, uh, Mrs. Mr. Chairman, um, on on page four, on let's see, class seven temporary license beer license. Uh, rather than saying per day, put down uh, delete that per day and say per event. On the motion? Uh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Twenty dollars per day, not to exceed hundred dollars per event. So on the motion, the motion is twenty dollars per day, not to exceed one hundred dollars per event. Right. On the motion, without objection, so ordered. Okay. On uh, number ten two, you said temporary general license was is what? Mr. Logan, what is a temporary general license? Uh, I, I have John Garrido, who's the supervisor of the uh, uh, wait. I mean the uh, uh, ABC license. Who? Um, okay, so so uh, what I what does the, gen temporary general license mean? Uh, Mr. Garrido, go ahead and just uh, answer the gentleman's question. What is a temporary general license? Class class ten. Class ten. Thank you very much, Senator. The temporary general is actually comprised of all alcoholic beverage that there is available. And that would include beer, any hard liquor, and wine as well. Okay, that, well, uh, that's... I don't know. Uh, reason what was more reasonable, more or less, like uh, maybe fifty dollars, fifty dollars, not to exceed hundred dollars uh, per event. Is that your motion, Mr. Speaker? Rather than per day, it will be changed to per event. And say maybe since you're talking about beer, uh, hard liquor like wine and scotch and whiskey. So maybe fifty dollars per day, not to exceed hundred dollars per event. That'd be fine. On the motion. On the motion to change class ten temporary general license from one hundred dollars to fifty dollars per event, not to exceed one hundred dollars. I'm sorry, fifty dollars per day, not to exceed one hundred dollars per event. On the motion. Without objection, so ordered. Are there any other motions on this section? If there are not, we are now on section six. I'm sorry, uh, Senator Pangalinen. Um, the the mobile license. These are all brand new licenses, Art. Are there so there's no current charge for a limousine service? No, not at all. Uh, that is that is correct. Uh, we are trying to implement that limousine license. Um, with the board of uh, the ABC board. Um, uh, right now, um, I believe we're hearing um, these licenses and we're trying to get them through the board. But as of today, um, uh, there's no, we haven't charged. But you have, have you received any public input? I think uh, for, for, for the license, I think it's already law. There's this a law. mobile business license? Yes. I thought you said there's no currently no license. There, we haven't. Uh, I, I believe it's before the board for them to get approval. Which for their board? License. Which board? The ABC board. Okay. Oh, this is a license to sell liquor in, in the a, limousine. In a limousine. It's yeah. not for a limousine service. No. Oh, that no. was my question. Right. There's okay. <laughs> All right. There is a fee for a limousine service. Yes, I believe there. And this is for, for the in, entire year. Right. I, I believe this section is uh, related Pursuant to alcohol. Pursuant to the new. Right, this whole all, section. All right. related to alcohol, right. dispensing and, and, okay. And how did you determine the cost of the license? What was the kind of, did you compare it to other jurisdictions or did you, did you, uh, what was the uh, basis? That, yeah. that was uh, the recommendation by the ABC board uh, from the research that they did back in the States. 
that was the recommendation from the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. Uh, the chairman, as well as other members, apparently, from what I understand, had made some research themselves. Uh -huh. uh, as a matter of fact, it was originally more than that okay. that they were asking for. All right. So this is this is based on some other jurisdictions. George, did you have something to add? Yes, sir. May I add that they charge like three hundred dollars for the first hour, plus I, I think an additional one hundred per hour for this this kind of service. Okay. Some of the investigators. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, yeah. To, okay. to give you a basis of how they, they assess and charge you. Yeah. So this is, you know, what they normally charge the customer. And what was the, did the board have a public hearing on this fees? No, sir. No. So, so the, they just decided to put the fee in and they would have approved it without a public hearing or? It well, sir, the, the Alcohol and Beverage Control Board uh, didn't get the opportunity to have that hearing. Okay. Uh, we've had problems uh, trying to get the board together. Trying to get each, a quorum. So in the final analysis, uh, we had a meeting with Senator uh, Palacios, and uh, that's what they recommended. Okay. All right. Thank you. Senator Palacios. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just uh, for clarification on that, I'm, I'm holding, I have a copy of Bill 67, which actually deal standing alone regarding this issue. And in fact, even the, uh, it doesn't have three categories of fees here. It just has a mobile license at $500. That's what we agreed. That's on Bill 67, and that's what I like to do the amendment. And at the end of this chapter, I like to offer, of course, a new section that define what is mobile license and because there's an existing law actually that authorized this. Now the only thing that's holding the implementation of this program, and this, is, this should have been implemented about two years ago, is that the uh, rules and regulations uh, have not yet been implemented by the ABC. But then uh, in that meeting that we had, it was recommended of course by the ABC board to adopt the rules and regulations applicable and enforceable uh, to on sale license so that that way we link it instead of having the triple A on the rules and regulations because the law already to license is there. Of course, the fee that's your discussion, but uh, Bill 67 is actually addressed that with just one, one fee, which is $500 for a mobile license, and a mobile license can be a limousine, a chartered van or chartered bus. And it, it defines the premises that it can be consumed only within the vehicle. And the amendment would, would explain that at the end of this chapter, which I would offer, which is part of Bill six, essentially the entire Bill 67, uh, ex except the f legislative findings and those things. So the amendment that I would like to offer at this would define what is mobile license and according, of course, to the public law that's already been passed two years ago, but with the fee that's uh, that's paid at five hundred dollars flat for a mobile license, and that's that's the history of this. is is It's only the fee that's remaining to be adopted, and the rules and regulations. But ABC already agreed at five hundred dollars, and the on sale rules and regulations for on sale beer would would apply. To the limousine, to the mobile license, I mean, not limousine license, but mobile license, so that it includes a van, chartered van, chartered limousine, and bus, whatever. So, Senator, is your are, are you proposing an amendment to change all of these figures on, under mobile license to 500? Uh, actually, right there, right there at class 12, for example, you just say mobile license, and then you draw a line and say $500 per year, and then strike out those things because at the end it would define who would, you know how you issue mobile license. So you issue mobile license to limousine, to chartered van, and and uh, I guess the chartered tra transportation as defined in, in the law that was passed two years ago. That was reference here. So, so it would be only just a mobile license, not, not mobile license for limousine, mobile license for charter. It doesn't have like that. I think we agreed at just one figure, which is $500 for a mobile license that can be used by a limousine, by a van, by a bus, but it is the vehicle that's licensed, not the person and not the business. So that if that vehicle is down for some reason at some shop, 
it, it's not transferable. And those things are spelled out in the amendment, mm -hmm. which is actually the, the, the substance of Bill 67. So, so, Senator, are you proposing an, an amendment to this section? Yeah, with respect to the, uh, to the fee that mobile license be $500 and strike out the limousine, the ABC under 12. All right. So on the motion, the motion is to place $500 for all mobile licenses, regardless of type, and strike out A, B, and C, as well as D. Is that what you're saying? Senator Palacios. That, that's, what, that's what I'm saying, actually, because I'm just repeating Bill 67, but All right. that, so that can be adjusted. But I, I just want to point out that there need, they need only be one license okay, to cover so all. So not to misconstrue, make it clear. You're saying to put $500 on Class 12 mobile license and to strike all sections below it, which is A, B, C, and D, correct? Yes, because all those all different right. vehicles will have to get a mobile license. Understood. Senator Shimizu, did you have... Uh, did you want to speak on the motion? Is there any uh, definition in any of the laws, any parts of the uh, act that defines mobile license? Because the proposal is just to put mobile license and uh, don't operationalize the definition of what is a mobile license, limousine service and so forth and so forth. If the proposal is to remove that, is there any other provision that defines that? So at least, Senator Palacios, did you did you have a point of information? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know whether premature, but actually that will be the amendment at the end of this, uh, which which will be a new section at okay. the end of chapter six that would define. And if you if you want me to read it, just for purpose of information, as so we. You, you're telling the you on the body that you were going to proffered amendment to define what a mobile license is after we uh, It's just a short sentence, if I can read it. Go ahead. And it says here, of course, uh, section 3228 of chapter 3, article 2, title 11, of course, this is all from, from uh, Bill 67. It says here, a mobile license shall be a general on-sale license only and shall authorize the licensee to sell alcoholic beverages to passengers, clients, and customers for consumption only on the premises of a limousine or bus meeting the requirements of 16 GCA uh, section 18121. The license shall be restricted to vehicles owned and registered by the licensee and shall not be transferable. All right. And so then all, all rules and regulations, of course, will be applicable as it is an on license. Senator Shimizu, does that yes, answer Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to ask that question because we're delineating the description of what a mobile. Now let me, so if it says mobile license, let's take for example, one of the things that I can visualize is when you're, car you're carrying passengers, right? For business purposes. Let's take for example, when you have, I, I see going down to the beach, you know, um, a pickup full of our Japanese tourists to go on a dive. Is that a mobile license? Um, it's a, Pick up limousine. Granted, it's not the, you know, the shiny, but it's it's still a, a transporting of uh, passengers, and I'm sure that they include. That. So I just wanted to ask that question to make sure that we we um, define it uh, at where whatever the section will be, we define it so that it does not necessarily leave it up to the imagination to be charging, uh, you know. Uh, $500 for transporting, let's say, on an eco tour and, and so forth, and that's limousine service. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Espaldon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just, point of clarification, I, I, in listening to Senator uh, Shimizu and Senator Palacios, uh, I'm of the opinion that Senator Shimizu is talking about a license for a vehicle in itself, while Senator, uh, excuse, that's Senator Shimizu, Senator Palacios basically for the purpose the purpose of a mobile license is to sell or to serve alcohol on a moving vehicle. Is that correct? I mean, that's that's we're not talking about a, a, a license for a vehicle, a recreation vehicle of any kind. It's for the specific purpose so that it allows them to serve alcoholic beverages on that vehicle. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want yeah. a clarification. Chairman, Thank you. Yeah. Just point of information since he mentioned my name. Well, uh, let me. No, I just to want to ask that charter. Senator Shimizu. Senator Shimizu. 
Uh, Senator Munoz Barnes, and then okay. we'll go back to you, okay? Thank Senator you. Senator Munoz Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I appreciate the mover of the amendment in reference to uh, his proposed amendment. Um, I have concerns because the the proposal that we have in front of us regarding the, um, I guess, the authorization to use alcohol, or I mean, to have alcohol brever beverages on these different uh, models of vehicle, it, it leaves me to understand that the breakdown here explains uh, a more detailed explanation of what the vehicle is, whether it be the limousine itself versus the, the charter van of, of a 10, whether it be a 10 passenger, a 15 passenger, then up after the 15 passenger heads on to the bus. So for me, my only concern, though I appreciate and I have no uh, qualms to his future amendment that he's going to put in in reference to the definition, I, I'd like to leave the class 12 in as far as the breakdown of the vehicles and what it's and what we have before us. So I guess that would be uh, an objection, though I appreciate what the, the uh, author has to say, I'd like to leave the breakdown of the vehicles because it, it gives a, 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 a true definition of what the vehicle is and what is utilized, what, what the so, utilization so, um, is for. So you're, you're amending the amendment to leave all the existing uh, breakdown A, B, C, and D, uh, but his amendment is still to put $500 per. No, I, I, I'd still keep the, the amendments uh, because there is a difference between the passengers that carry these, uh, the, the passengers that are carried in these vehicles. So you're objecting to the amendment? That's why I said All right, that's what. All right, there's an objection to the amendment. Is there any further uh, comments? Senator Palacios? So you withdraw the amendment? All right, so there, there is no further amendment on the floor at this time. Senator Munya Barnes, do you have any further comments? All right, um, there being none, um, really quickly, um, Progress of the chair real quick. Um, just wanted to ask Mr. Largan, um, under this, each one of them, A and D, uh, you have per vehicle, but B and C do not. Was that a typographical error, which was uh, inadvertently omitted? Because on limousine services per vehicle, a charter van does not say per vehicle, and neither does charter, a charter vehicle van, charter vehicle van in B and C does not say per vehicle. So was that an omission? It is an omission. So if there's a motion from a member from the body to put per vehicle, Senator Shizaki? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's go ahead and make a motion to include per vehicle in sections, uh, subsection B and C. Okay, on the motion, without objection, so ordered. Are there any further comments on this section? Senator Wanpat and then Senator Pangolina. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to, to find out, since this legislation actually has been you know, enacted uh, over two years ago, has, uh, has any one of these vehicles, whatever, been in operation and actually selling alcohol without a license? The question or? is whether there's ever been a, a vehicle license issued for the consumption of alcohol since the enactment of this. No, ma'am. Okay, so so with this fees now, would it would they would be authorized now? Then they will come in and get a license, and they'll be authorized to to sell then alcohol on these uh, vehicles. Yes, ma'am. Once this is passed, then we that's will when start the accepting. law will go into effect. Okay. All right, uh, Senator Panglina, and then Senator Munoz Barnes. Yeah, I just have a question then. Um, if I run a limousine service, and I have five limousines do i if i only want one license to de do i have to designate that vehicle or can i rotate it can i decide this week this limousine is the one that's going to serve alcohol next week it's going to be that limousine but they can't do it at the same time so no that no sir the intent of it was to was its license per vehicle so if that vehicle is down then that license also become dormant until such time that that vehicle is up is up Yes, sir. Is that in the rules and regs? That is what the ABC board intended for, for, for the fees to be. Because that's, that's the original law says per vehicle. Okay. So, but, but again, it's, that's nowhere though does it say that I have to, 
you know, that I, I have to designate that vehicle. It's not in the rules and regs? It, it, no, it's not in the rules and regs. It is in the law, the original law that was passed about two, three years ago. Right. That it is for, that each vehicle will be licensed, will, be, will have an alcohol license. So if you have a fleet of five mm -hmm. and one is down, all five will have alcohol license. When one is down, then that license it will be dormant until such time that your that ve that vehicle is up. Or if you have an additional vehicle that is not licensed, the rules and regulation you can transfer that license from that vehicle to another vehicle. That's what I mean. I can, yes, sir. I can basically rotate my vehicles. Which ones can sell alcohol? Yes, sir. You can do that. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Senator Bunyard Barnes now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, the, I think the, uh, the question I have here on hand is based on the, the proposed licenses that are going to, I mean, fees that are going to be imposed. Is that in any violation to the open container law? Is there an exemption? Just, just a point of clarification on that one. Uh, was, it, was it amended in, based on the open container law because no alcoholic beverages were? I just want to s double check for the record to make sure that we're not in violation no, of no. any specific laws here. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Yeah. Base because. Hey, point of information, Senator Kawa? Well, actually, that's what I'll clarify. Yes, it is. It, it, that, that's the whole. There, there was, uh, again, amendments made into the law by the open container. And that's why, information wise, also, it's also legal. It's been legal since the beginning of time here. I, and I guess it was patterned after a, one of the quirks about Guam law. If you have a trailer, you know those those movable homes, that that's always been legal to have a, a open open alcohol container. Of course, Guam is only 30 miles by four to 12, so it, it was something I always found kind of funny as a quirk in Guam law. But you could have a again a trailer trailer home uh, and a moving trailer home that's hooked up to a vehicle and be legal to uh, open and consume con uh, alcoholic beverages. Anyway, point of information. You're welcome. Senator Palacios? All right, that's fine. Any other comments on this section? Senator Espaldon. Uh Yeah, just again, I got a little confused, I'm sorry, on the, on the last section. And your, uh, the question, I think, was basically if you had a fleet, essentially, and you only wanted to designate one of the vans to, to be a licensed uh, carrier, so, that, so to speak, right, uh, and it, you said if it goes down, then license becomes dormant. But then in the next sentence, you, and, then, and, then it's, and then it came across when you spoke again that, no, you could actually rotate that license among several vehicles. I, and I'm just not sure what, what I okay. heard. What I meant is that it's up to you, the licensee. If you decide that you want to keep that license within that vehicle, that's up to you. But the license, you cannot operate that license unless you come in and transfer that license from that vehicle that is down to another one. So, so they would have to come in to you first? They, yes, sir. Okay. You, you have to because... Yeah, if, no, that's, if what, that's what I was it, wondering. But yeah, if, you, if you take that license and we go out and find you down, down at Two Lovers Point, mm -hmm. and we'll take a look at the license versus the registration, and it doesn't add up to, you know, yeah. then we're going to cite you. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I was a little confused. Thank you. All right, on section five. All right, concludes discussion on section five. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, we need to, um, as much as possible, move to put all these uh, folks have to be at Rev and Tax tomorrow. Uh, section six. Senator Pangalina, just really briefly explain the uh, section. Understand you want me to explain that 3613 section, Senator? Okay. What's been happening here is that we have been the administrator as well as the ABC alcohol, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board has been suspending licenses, and the government of Guam is losing out on that thing. Uh, what I propose with the with the ABC board is a win-win situation. The 
licensee, when they are cited for any violation of the alcoholic beverage control, can continue to operate. But instead of a suspension, we're going to penalize them until such a time as you go down that if the licensee continues to violate those alcoholic beverage, then the administrator or the alcoholic beverage control board has no other recourse but to either suspend or revoke the license. This is all related to the alcohol laws. Okay. I yes, just, sir. I just wanted to know, be very clear on what it was. Okay. Thank on, you. On section six, no further questions. Um, Senator Spadon. Just real quickly, um, now I, I, I realize that there are probably uh, a lot of different provisions in this chapter uh, which, which regulate the, the alcohol consumption, alcohol selling. Uh, is that correct? So you're saying that just for one violation, what's the most petty violation that anybody could violate? I'm sorry. Sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just under the ABC uh, regulation, rules and regulations, what is the most petty violation uh, that, that a bar or an establishment could, could violate? Waitresses or managers having no ABC card. That okay. That would be the That's most, the most petty. petty one. Yes, sir. That's and not the, even petty. They should the have one. The one. most extreme is the operation past the operating hour. Okay. Okay. After hours, we call it. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. On section six. Nothing else. Section seven. You want to go ahead and explain that uh, again, Art? Sir, uh, under the Greyhound rules and regulations, uh, the the for this for the dogs in the in the Greyhound. Dogs. All right. <laughs> so, Any other questions on the dogs? If not, then it goes to the dogs. Section eight. Go ahead, please. Just explain us. Explain, if you would, please, section by section, real briefly, what it exactly entails. Section uh, eight. Six, the uniform filing fee for this is regarding uh, filing of UCC, Senator. Uh, UCC. UCC. Secure the uniform secure the uh, transactions. Yeah. So, uh, this is pertaining to sec secured transactions, Senator, and so uh, under the uniform commercial code, right now we're only charging. Uh, three dollars uh, for the recordation of the lien of the uh, uh, financial institutions or of any other creditor. Now, is that true for all of these sections, section eight, nine, ten? But it used to be appears to be uniform in their appearance here. Is that yes, the sir. Same thing it used to be them? uniformly uh, for the filing of the secured transaction amendment uh, release or termination thereof. The fee is just. Three dollars. We're raising it to ten dollars. So, uh, on sections eight, nine, ten, and eleven, appear to be pretty much the same dealing with UCC. Are there any questions on these sections? If none, we'll go to section twelve. Sir, would you go ahead and explain that as well?
Section 12 doesn't seem to be appropriate, but Section um, Senator, this refers to uh, uh, information requests or searches being made by the financial institutions. So if, if they're inquiring whether or not a certain person or, or business entity has any, has any outstanding uh, indebtedness with uh, any creditor, then this is the type of information that they request. So this is the type of information that they request and we, we Sometimes, in addition to the information, they do request also for uh, copies of any existing liens, of any. So for that type, um, we, we are asking to uh, be able to uh, maintain, maintain the, uh, the same charges that we, we currently do now for the copies and the, succeed, the succeeding uh, uh, pages for the copies, but we do uh, want to raise the fee from uh, existing three dollars to ten dollars. No questions on that section. Oh, Senator Pangolino. I just want you to uh, to state for the record that all of the information here uh, that you're allowing access of outs of individuals um, requesting them, they're all based on publicly filed documents. You're not violating any kind of privacy act on the individual. You're not going to release any. Uh, income tax information or anything. These are all liens, uh, judgments maybe, that may be on file with the department. These are all public records. There are no yes, yes, private records at all that the government will release in its possession to these outside individuals. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All okay. of these are public information. All right. Thank you. Nothing on section 13? Nothing else on section 13? Uh, let me see. Is this is that a new section that, uh, or is this uh, what it is right now? It's amending uh, 6201. What what is the annual retail license now? Um, the change here is from 500 to 1,000 dollars for wholesale. No, license. no. This is the annual retail license. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. What it still what? stays the same? There's no change. The only change is the section C from 500 to 1,000. Annual retail license then. Wholesale, wholesale. Mm. Yeah. What if you, yeah. Yeah, the retail you stays the same. Would probably raise it to, to, to $100? Would that be more reasonable? You know, for item A? And, and also an item B, the same thing? Annual vending machine retail license? Yeah. Is that a motion to change annual retail license to a $100? Yeah. Why did you not propose yeah, to change it? Yeah, provide, sort of uh, give us a reason why you, you have not changed it. Well, we, have, we have had many, many meetings and everything else to, to increase the fees from $40, like for example, depending on the annual revenue of the business, like a, a person selling a snow cone out there is $40. A big retail store making over $5 million a month is $40. There's such a big inequity there. So we were trying to go on a scale that somebody making up to a, at least 200,000, it would remain 40. Anything over 200,000 would be $250. Anything over half a million should be 500. Anything over a million should be a thousand. So, so, so it's the disparity doesn't exist. And, and again, this has been commingled and I apologize for us looking like we, it was just all this seems to be uh, commingled with everything with, from dog license to liquor. And so, but having said that, the, the, the approach that we have been doing is we're trying to, to, to give you all the figures of how many people we're making up to a certain level so that this way that that disparity does not exist, Senators. Okay, well, I'm, hi, George. Hi. Uh, I'm, we're on page seven, right? Yes. Uh, sir. Section 13. Correct. Okay, on the annual retail license is forty dollars. That's presently what it is, right? Correct. I just gas my car; it cost me forty-five dollars. <laughs> exactly. Right, and, and uh, I don't. I think it's hundred dollars reasonable, wouldn't it be? Well, we have we have a different scale that we had uh, proposed. Well, you for don't you. have it on scale. But though, apparently, here. the right. scale. We not. didn't use that scale, 
and we, we uh, hundred dollars seems reasonable for um, the the charge to operate a business on Guam. Uh, for that business, it is very reasonable. Um, the reason why we didn't look at it is because we had other uh, ways to, to charge that we um, we didn't uh, implement. So, a um, hundred dollars to uh, is reasonable for the department to uh, charge. Just a second. Go ahead. Okay. So well, anyway, I, I want to make uh, an amendment on A and B, and also for the B, make it a hundred dollars as well. Okay. Rather so on the amendment 20, to change A to hundred, one hundred. And Section B, B to, to 100. 100. On the amendment, Senator Cabo? Yeah. I, I just want to be very careful with these amendments. Um, and I, you know, First of all, me being a, I, I know all aspects of this. Uh, on the annual, the, the comment that was made earlier by, by the representative of Revin Tax on the annual retail license, I, I think if you were to talk to any, any one of the major retailers, obviously there's a, uh, there is a, a neighborhood store, and a neighborhood store has their volume. And then you got, and, and I, I don't think there would be any uh, qualms from the business community basing it on, you mentioned a scale. Uh, now, I think that's something that we should really re review. I know there's been an amendment at $100, but obviously there's, there are companies that are in retailing at over, 20, 30, 40, 50 million plus. And then there are the retailers that are, gosh, they're, they're barely making ends meet and they're, they're probably at $12,000 to $50,000 a year in sales. And, and again, I, I feel perfectly uh, uh, at ease the, where, where we were to look at this annual retail license. You made mention of a certain scale. That's something to look at. And, and with this particular scale, um, uh, doing further evaluation on the retail side and hopefully coming back to it, and I'd like to have it come back to it, you know, with the movement of this, of this particular provision here. But I, I obviously, whether you move it to 40 to 100, it will, in some businesses, make hardly, it will be insignificant. And then for some other businesses, it will be very, very significant, and that's why I'm, 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 I'm kind of treading on why I'm going to object to just that both A and B uh, being at the same uh, dollar level because I think this is something that we, we, we could, we should look at more carefully, and and with that make a decision as a body. As for the annual vending machine license, I do know you have companies. Actually, there's two soft drink companies, and and if a vending machine it doesn't dispense like a store either. And if you were to do it at 100 bucks per machine, obviously it's, it's going to have a major impact because vending machines do not make the same sales as even a mom and pop store. And mom and pop stores don't make even close to what you would see in either one of the major retail supermarkets here or uh, one of the discount, uh, one of the big um, um, retail uh, establishments. So that, that if, if I'm, I'm going to have to object to this thing, but not objecting to the motion uh, to, towards the uh, the increase, but but objecting so that we could come back to it and, and come up with a more reasonable uh, fee schedule or, or license schedule that would take into consideration the the, the size uh, volume of businesses in both the retail and in vending machines, as well as. Uh, um, um, seeing what could be apportioned out uh, and what, like again, I, I feel a, a $50 million business could pay more than 100 bucks, but at the same time, I don't know about mom and pop whether 100 bucks will a little bit be, uh, will be too, uh, too significant. So again, I'm gonna make an objection, but I, I, would, I would like to reserve the right, maybe we can come back into this thing and, and have some further discussions. I would love to see uh, the proposals that have been, that you supposedly have ready. I wish you could have done it uh, in this schedule. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Blas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Art along those lines from, you know, good Senator from Mighty. Do you have those proposals with regards to? I 
I believe we have it. Uh, I just want to make a comment going back to Senator Calvo's uh, um, um, putting a, 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 a fee schedule together. We just have to make sure we close the loopholes because we've seen in the past where we allow uh, an exemption for certain people at a certain uh, uh, amount that sometimes they come up with a creative way of getting everybody their license under that amount through getting more licenses uh, for different sections of the retail maybe or um, we just need to look at how uh, the minds work and how people come up with creative ways to fit themselves in the lowest possible um, um, settings for these um, uh, so that they don't pay, you know, a $500 million company can divide their company into 500 ways and pay a cheaper um, uh, license fees. And sure. it's been done. Same with the, like the Dave Santos Act. Uh, that was supposed to be for one business, but, you know, you got a husband and wife, they split the business half, gets that, and they get a $100,000 exemption. Uh, sure. For and I recognize this, and I, I you know, I, t I tend to agree here with regards to looking at the annual retail license. You know, when when you've got a mom and pop store, you know, and you know, this this mom and pop is just barely making it, you know, on, on selling produce and, and, and whatnot, and uh, probably only making at maybe fifteen twenty thousand dollars a year, probably at best, and paying the same amount for a retail license as, as you would a major conglomerate, you know, so some some business that's 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 making in the millions. Um, I think this is one of, an opportunity that uh, here is we can we can start to separate and as far as disparity and I recognize yes we all, we all know art that uh, you know once the law is people are going to start to find creative ways and we've seen this with the Dave Santos Act but I think that also as a result of what we've seen before you know we there, there, there's ways to be able to 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 capture the best cost I mean even if you you, you split it up into different companies then we get two different individuals paying t more taxes. So I don't know if that's it, if that's bad at all, quite honestly, because we're not going to we're not going to decrease any total amount, as as, as well as I mean, we should probably add it up, add it up a little bit more. So if you've got that, you know, I'm you know I'm, I'm just interested in looking at that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, uh, for the benefit of the body, the uh, documents on the proposed changes and the uh, tiered system is being copied right now. We'll distribute that in a minute, Senator Guthards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since we have the folks from Revenue and Tax here, I wanted to ask them. I didn't see in their proposal coming from the governor any uh, action that would eliminate the wholesale tax rebates or the uh, exemptions to uh, businesses on the island. I'm really surprised about it because the governor was very vocal about this over the last uh, year or so. Could Mr. Logan please explain? Uh, this uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I think I, I do have a motion that has to do with that's the correct. change in license uh, fee. That's correct. Um, Senator Guthrie, um, there is a time for that uh, right now, though we are speaking on the motion to change the figures uh, on sections, just a moment, B and C, I'm sorry, A and B from $40 and $20 to $100 each. So it probably would be appropriate for you to bring that question after we dispose of the motion. When we get to C? On the motion? Um, on the motion, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wait till later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, that's fine. Uh, Senator, I'm sorry, let me see you real quick. Senator Ishizaki is recognized. And then after that, uh, it'll be Respicio and Palacios. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know what, in talking to George from Revenue Tax, I, I, th I think I want to propose this amendment. To, to this section, and that's on the annual retail license fee. We should probably keep it at 40 for uh, businesses that have a gross sales of less than $100,000 as one provision. And if you want, I, you want me to continue on Part A, or should we put a Part D and E? I'm sorry, so are you proffering an amendment at this time to the amendment? Uh, Yes, um, Mr. Speaker, Tony, do you want me to? Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, Senator Sisaki is going to offer another amendment. So what I'll do is to withdraw my amendment okay. as far as A and B, right. and he'll make the uh, uh, motion to, to amend. Okay. Um, so I motion, withdraw my amendment. The motion is withdrawn. 
Um, at this time, we are still in the section. Senator Ishizaki, you recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So my amendment would be as follows, that we retain the $40 uh, annual retail license fee for retail businesses that have a gross sales of less than $100,000, and then to charge $100 for those retail businesses that gross between $100,000 and 999999 per year. And the third part of this would be to charge $1,000 for retail licenses for gross sales in excess of $1 million. Mr. Chairman, can we get that in writing? That's more than a couple words. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, briefly take a break and get that. Um, can you please put that in writing within the next couple of minutes, Senator Shizaki? Can we the whole will be in recess? Camille Hole is back in order. Uh, we have an amendment by Senator Shizaki, uh reference to this section. Uh, Senator Shizaki. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, I, I just uh, I'm going to read off the amendment. It's a $50 fee for um, for retail outlets that gross fifty thousand dollars or less, and then between for retail outlets that gross between fifty thousand and one dollar up to $100,000, the, the fee should be $100 annually, and then raise the fee annually to $250 for retail gross sales of between $100,000 and $1 up to $250,000, and then charge a retail license fee for $1,000 for gross sales between $250,000 and $1 to $2 million and then charge a $2,000 retail license fee for uh, gross sales in excess of $2 million. Okay, so for clarification purposes, all figures on the left columns are represent gross sales. That's correct. Okay, on the motion, Senator Palacios. Uh, this is more or less a question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a business license, of course, is issued at the starting point for a business. Uh, let's say July, f I mean, I think July 1st. And what, how do you, how, what amount would be used as a basis for a charge of a new license that has not yet experienced any gross sales? Yeah, Mr. Logan was just clarifying that, Mr. Logan. What we usually do is we have a look back period. Um, we looked at last year's, um, um, uh, fee, uh, gross receipts, okay. and we would base ourselves on that. So probably a person who's just starting doesn't have any, uh, uh, it would come under the, uh, the minimal. The minimal. And, and, and then so the following year, if he makes $250 million, then it's the... So uh, there is no, no additional charge uh, after the, the, that year at the expiration of the, the, let's say, the $40 license. And then it ended up that actually, I, at the end of that license year, I grows to the amount that actually would got me a hundred dollar license fee. Would there be a, an adjustment when I come back for a second year license? Uh, 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 when they renew it, it uh -huh. would, would change to that new fee. So that's how back, it's right. gonna it's right. gonna go. Right. But okay. Prior year. So on the second year, for example, I fall again below, then it wouldn't benefit me. You just follow me. The, right. The, it will follow the, 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 the year end total. Right. right. And the succeeding will follow year. me for the next right. Right. license fee right. That's uh, correct. determination. Okay. Okay. As long as there's a formula like that, then you'll be, you'll be okay. Thank Senator you. Senator Cabo? Actually, the question I have for the author of the amendment, I'm just noting that uh, representatives from... Um, Revintax passed out this sheet uh, earlier to all the members of the, of the legislative body. And I guess these were the, the numbers that originally, the, the scaling of, of uh, retail licenses, these are, are the numbers that came about uh, and were, were actually contemplated by Revintax but were not provided to the legislature. And in it, there, there is again the first designation of a dollar to 250,000 in sales for 100 bucks. 
uh, for the retail license, two hundred fifty thousand and one dollar to five hundred thousand, uh, and the, for those sales, two hundred dollars, uh, five hundred thousand and one dollars to one million at four hundred dollars, one million to two million dollars uh, at eight hundred dollars, and then anything exceeding two million was uh, at 1,000. And I just note that there's been a different scaling uh, um, from, from the proposed amendment from uh, the Senator Ishizaki. So I guess the question I have for Senator Ishizaki, this is not at, at all the same as what was originally contemplated by revenue tax. So is there a basis to how you broke this, this dollar figure down? Senator That's a good question, Senator Calvo. Yeah. And no, that was a uh, consensus derived from a short group of uh, advisors. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, no. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that group, is there, was there, I, in fact, if it was a group, I, I noticed uh, some members of represent, I, I, I would suppose then mm -hmm. that the discussions were between the, Senator, the offer of the amendment and members of Revenue Tax, correct? Was that, was that the cons so? And I see these folks from Revenue Tax with their eyes wide open and their mouths ready to give an explanation. Since obviously there have been changes uh, that have been proffered uh, by Revenue Tax uh, officials to the mover of this amendment, and they they don't reflect at all the numbers I see originally as uh, proffered by uh, Revenue Tax. Can you give me an explanation, any individual in, from Revenue Tax, and how you came up with these new numbers? On top. Sir, uh, may I add that I, I threw that into Senator Sasaki in that I, I think we overlooked the fact that there are people like Mary Kay uh, Avon uh, people selling those things, and they do less than fifty thousand a year. And I think it would be inappropriate to 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 uh, to consider them, you know, in excess of fifty thousand dollars to be. So that's why we 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 did the scale. Is that sufficient? Well, that's one reason why you could have done it. It's just that there's just so many changes. Yeah. That's why. I, so, uh, so it was Mary Kay. Well, again, they, to differentiate <laughs> people doing less than fifty thousand yeah. and people doing le over a yeah. hundred thousand, and and then we just gradually went into that scale. That okay. That, no, that's the explanation. Is is there any other explanation? Mm, no. Sir. Okay. Anyway, that's. I just wanted to get an idea because there's a big difference. There's a big difference between the originals. Uh, that was pro uh, offered, and then, of course, this amendment. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Senator Umpinko, and then Senator Respicio. I guess the reason why I'm saying something is just to sort of uh, bring to light. Uh, I just remember my wife just uh, got a license to teach, and she was considered a private contractor. And uh, she's teaching part-time, she, or she was teaching part-time. And the total amount that she made altogether so far, and I don't think, uh, will be uh, maybe around 2,000 this year. <laughs> and less, less than, two, probably less than 2,000 for the entire uh, calendar year 2007. But uh, let's see, then of course, with the scale that we have here, an individual like her or somebody else like, you know, making less uh, D100 to, to 50,000 shoe, they'll be paying $50. Sir, uh, that, that is not a retail license. That is a service license. A service license is only 25. Well, we, I, I, okay. So, so I'm, gl a, I'm glad you clarified there's that. There's three different licenses, wholesale, okay. retail, and service. Sir, she paid so that $25 means for... She signed a contract, and I, so I don't know if you determine her as a contractor, because normally a normal contractor is a building contractor, but anyone who signs a contract falls under a category you know, the, of, the, 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 the terminology contractor. The